Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a tour of my little craft room. I am so excited to share this space with you. This is actually the first time that I have had a room dedicated solely just for crafts. In the past, I've always had to have that space double as a bedroom as well. Now, it does look a little different than it did when I first started my channel. Those of you who have been with me from the beginning, this looks all the same to you, but this used to be on the wall in front of me. Everything changed when we decided that we were going to move to Tennessee. But that move didn't pan out. We have decided to postpone that move until the economy improves. But in the meantime, I had packed up my room. I had gotten rid of furniture pieces. I had given so many things to my sister, who's now setting up her craft space. So then when we decided we weren't moving, I had to bring everything back in. But I have to say, I really enjoy crafting in my pared down space. It feels much less claustrophobic. Well, now that I've given you a little backstory, let's go ahead and get this started. So as you come down the hall, this is actually the view from the doorway. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this side of the room right here. I have two IKEA tables lined up side by side, and that just gives so much space there to work with. I love my little Parsons chairs, and I covered those in just some nice white cotton twill probably 20 years ago, and it has just held up nicely. On the first table here, this is where I have my silhouette set up and also my laptop where I can do my vinyl cutting and make decals and stencils as well. In this drawer, I have all kinds of various rulers and I also have my cutting mats and also some more blades for my silhouette. And I also keep my trash can down underneath this side. And in this drawer, I have various paper trimmers, a paper scoring board. This is a punch to help make the spine for books and junk journals. And then I just have some transfers and some decoupage paper. And I also keep my business receipts in this drawer as well. And then moving on to the next table, I have some little baskets that have various trims that I like to keep out that I use very often. And I love my little sign there. If I'm doing any kind of a vendor market, that's what I use to display in my tent. I also have my other basket that has some more trims and some little flowers here. Then up here I have my crinkled seam binding and I also have some beautiful torn cotton ribbon. Love, love, love that business cards and planners and that kind of thing on the top here. Then in this drawer, I keep various rolls of tape and my glue sticks, bone folder, paper clips and rubber bands, and also little binder clips. And then back in here, I've got some little charms and I've got some fun stuff that I have ordered for some projects we're gonna be doing this year. Then in this drawer, this is where I like to keep most of my embroidery supplies. I've got my floss and my hoop. I've got some patterns. And then I also have extra gift tags. I just like to keep those on hand just to have them when I need them. And then I've got some additional paper and cardstock in this area here. Down below, I have some florals. I've got a little bird cage back there that I keep my Sola wood flowers and some sewing notions in. And then on this side, I have just a few Christmas florals that I think actually work well for shabby chic crafting throughout the year. So I do keep those on hand. So moving from this wall, I've got my beautiful window here. And I've got my bench that I recovered. I've got a video for that as well. In my window, I've got my beautiful stained glass that Mr. Shabby made. He actually is so talented, he really does beautiful work with his stained glass. We move over and we've got all of this on the opposite wall. Starting over here in this basket, this is where I keep my most used florals. 
and most of these I pick up at either Walmart or Hobby Lobby. Up here I put the lace book that I made in last week's video, and I have some candles, and I've also got a picture of me with my beautiful sisters that I like to look at when I'm crafting. This shelf, I have wood beads, pom-pom trim, and lace. Next to that, I have my larger pom-pom trim. I love this stuff. And I also have my magnifying glass because, you know, over 50 eyes. Below that, we have these beautiful storage boxes. I showed you guys how to do these just out of boxes from your pantry. I also have a video where we stitched this embroidery pattern, and then I just drew some pearls around there just to make it look cute. Next door to that, I have a glass container that I have taken giant craft sticks and wrapped my lace around and stuck them in there just to have some place to organize and store my lace. And then I just made a shabby tassel and ran that through a spool of thread to make that cute little embellishment on the jar. Below that, I have this organizer that holds some of my push pins and also my markers. I've got a picture there. Look at that, that's my mama. And I love looking at that. When I'm sitting at my craft table, I see these two pictures. That's mom and I on my wedding day. And then I also have my various tissues and decoupage paper back there as well. Next to that, I have my collection of thrifted doilies. I love buying doilies from thrift stores. I also have these little boards. I made these in a video as well, and I just wrap my lace or my ribbon around that, again, to keep it nice and organized and also look cute in the process. Below that, I have more of my lace, and also these are doilies that my mom made, so I keep them separately from my thrifted ones, and I just think they look so cute in this little toolbox. I also added an Iron Orchid Designs transfer to that. It is just so cute, and I also like using my little toolbox and display it with things for spring. It looks really cute that way. Then next to that, I have my Iron Orchid Designs, my molds, and then I have all of my stamps. I have a large stamp collection of Iron Orchid Designs products. And then I also have some rub-on transfers, and I have my paint inlays. So all of my Iron Orchid Designs products are located right here. And from here, I have this section set up for my sewing. This is actually a vanity, but it works perfectly in this space for a sewing table. In this drawer, I just have my various pins and needles. This section here actually lifts up, but I only use it for some of my sewing machine accessories, so I don't need to access that area very often. And then here, I just have some of my most commonly used thread colors. And up here on the top, I have my very first sewing machine. And I've got a candle. I have candles everywhere. I've got my thread back there. That was my mom's. I've got this cute little bird spindle that I purchased years ago from Hobby Lobby. And then I have this beautiful little teacup. Mr. Shabby bought this at an antique store for me because it had a bee on it. I have had this for so many years, and it's actually over 100 years old. And you can see that from the maker's mark on the bottom. And I just love this. Below that, I have a glass container that was my mother's. And I have paper flowers inside of that. Another one of mom's doilies. And just some other cute little things that I've made just for decor. I think that looks really cute. Next to that, I have another glass container that has more paper flowers in it, and also my mom's thimble collection. I have more of my crinkled seam binding. A cute little container that I picked up from Goodwill that I keep some pretty pink buttons in. Then I have this wide mouth mason jar with a straw insert, but instead of using a straw, 
I just put some ribbon in there and pull that out. That way it keeps it nice and handy because I do use these colors quite a bit. Below that, I have more of those storage containers that we made from pantry boxes. And I also did this cute little bird in one of my videos as well. Next to that, I have a blind hemmer. I used to do alterations for a dry cleaner and that makes it so much easier if you're doing hems in jackets or pants or dresses. So much easier than doing it all by hand. Below that, I have more mason jars that I use to store craft supplies in. This one has a floral frog in it, but I just put some various lace and trims in there, and that keeps everything nice and tidy and easy to access. And I just pull out what I need. Same thing with this one. I've got a floral frog, and then I just put all of that trim in there, and it keeps it nice and handy and looks really cute as well. And then I have some half round wood beads in that container. Next to that, I have this nice little carousel. And when I'm actually crafting and filming, I put this on the table with me just to keep all of my different scissors and all of my punches, everything that I need close at hand. Also have my cute little pencil sharpener. How adorable is that? Then below that, I have this container that I just keep little snips of florals in that I can use on smaller projects. And then all of this here is my scrapbooking paper. And then this is actually a folder that I keep my little remnants in so I can use them for other projects as well. And then next to that, I have my serger. So I have lots of different options when it comes to sewing. And then from that section, we will move into the closet. I love my craft closet. So on the door, I have various stockings that I like to decorate with. I don't like them to get squished when it's not Christmas. And then I also have lots of aprons because when I was doing paint parties, I had enough aprons so that I could have 12 participants at the paint party. I have shelving on this side of the door. And I also have shelving on this side of the door as well. So we'll go ahead and take a look at everything. So on the inside upper door, I've got some of my daughter's Barbie dolls. She's in her 30s and I still have her Barbie dolls. Then I've got wood blanks in this bucket and I have mason jar supplies and straws and such in this one. Below that, I have various things, items that I would use for staging and I also have some vinyl supplies here. And I also have this little photo album from when my daughter and I took a road trip out to California. Below that, I have some cleaning supplies, paint brushes. I have some books that I like to use for crafting. I have some ribbon here that I will actually keep this way. This was my mom's. And so, you know, her little hands took and wrapped around these things. So I'm just going to leave it just like it is. And then I have crepe paper and coffee filters that I like to use for crafting. Below that, I have more books that I like to use for book page crafts. Then I have some various little recyclables here that we're going to be using for some future projects. I also have some frames that are going to be getting makeovers. And then I have some florals and other things that I like to use for my staging here. And below that, I have my cute little bags that I take when I'm doing vendor markets various other types of tassels that I like to craft with. Little pink tree. Did a makeover on a cabinet door. I like to keep these things for staging. Then I have fabric and stencil vinyl and craft paper. And I also keep my sewing mat back here as well. Then on the other side of the door, I have baskets, more Barbie dolls, costume jewelry that I like to craft with, Below that, I have my little stick-on jewels, some carbon paper, Avery labels, the Avery transfer sheets, and then I also have a folder, so anything that I see in a magazine that I think is cute that I might make, I put it in there to save for some ideas. And then I save pieces of vinyl that are still large enough to use for other projects and also some transfer tape as well. Below that, I have various things. I will take this and my notepad to the table when I'm crafting with you guys, and also this, so I have these things on hand. 
Then I've got floral tape and floral wire and some paint supplies here. And then these are fabric scraps that I can use for additional projects. Below that I have various yarn, cleaning rags, and then I have a bird cage that I use in the spring on my dining table. I just don't have anywhere else to put it except in here. And below that I've got a basket of tutus because I used to have a tutu business. So I've just got all kinds of cute little tutus in this basket here. Now starting along the top up here, I still have more Barbie dolls. And I also have my own personal little doll collection. And then I have some storage boxes with patterns and elastic and things of that nature. Coming over here, mason jars and also some Dollar Tree items that I like to keep on hand to personalize to use as gifts. Below that, I have some gorgeous doorknobs that I like to use on furniture makeovers. I also have some items that I use for staging and decorating around my home. I have more boards that I need to finish wrapping some lace and ribbon around. Below that, I have candles, more staging items, and then I have Easter grass and raffia and also Spanish moss in this container here. Below that I have more commonly used craft supplies, little bells and wine corks and peat pots. I've also got some cute little things I've got planned coming up for us here and some more of my tape rolls that just won't fit in that other drawer and some paint markers. Below that I got two buckets here. One of them has Christmas supplies and the other one has some spring supplies. These are just smaller items that are easy to keep on hand. The other things are in bins out in the garage. And of course I got my tart tins and some more little jingle bells, craft sticks, and my bamboo skewers. Then below that I have a basket that has like hammer and extension cord, heat gun and nail gun, hair dryer, big thing of floral foam, and I also have this cute little wood burning kit. I haven't used it, but I intend to have some cute little projects for us to do this year. Below that, a sewing box where I keep various interfacing and things of that nature inside. Going back up here, more mason jars. I have a collection. I just love mason jars, especially the blue ones, but I also have some green and amethyst as well. Then I keep some other items on hand that I like to craft with with those mason jar lids. And I've got my cookie cutters and my biscuit cutters. Below that, I have some things that I like to stage with, but then I also have more crafting supplies, pearls and buttons, all kinds of cute little bling. Below that, I have lots of painting supplies, lots and lots of brushes of various types and sizes. Then I have my most used paint colors back there. I also have gesso and crackle glaze, my butcher block conditioner for some wood projects, and also wood glue, and my glue guns. Below that, I keep most of my waxes here, and I also have some watercolor and paint pens. I have this giant paper cutter here. It won't fit in these drawers. And I also have more of my wood beads. In this drawer I have all of my various archival inks that I like to use. And then I also have some other cute little stamps and some ink refills in my most used colors. This drawer has my paper punches inside. This drawer has my smaller bottles of acrylic and chalk paints. Below that I have a basket and that contains all of my tool here and it also has all of my felt. And then below that, family photos that I just need to get on it and get into some albums. And then up here I have another one of my mom's sewing kits 
And I have this gorgeous tin that contains little Christmas houses that I intend to paint to give them a shabby chic makeover. Below that, in these three boxes, this one contains tape and washi tape. It also contains all of my Mod Podge and my various other types of glue as well. And then this one, it has all of my various twine and jute inside there. And then this one, it contains my clay, my caulk, so all of my glitters are in there as well. Below that, I have lots of Christmas crafting supplies, but most of these are glass, and I just didn't want them to get crushed out in the garage, so I keep those here. Below that are all of my favorite fabrics. I just love all of these. These are my more shabby chic looking fabrics here with all of the florals and the French script and pink and just gorgeous. So those are my favorite fabrics to craft with. These are my neutrals that I use to snip and rip and do a lot of my shabby chic tassels. Below that are more bright, more vibrant colors here. And then I have more of the black and the buffalo check and things of that sort right here. Below that, these are mostly my Christmas crafting fabrics here. Then I've got my fiber fill. And then I've got all my various colors of burlap over here. Then below that, I spread this out on the floor when I'm painting. These have more family photos that need to be put into some sort of album. And then in this basket, I've got various grommets and woven trims. Of course, you saw we did some cute projects at Christmas time with that. This is actually closet shelving that Mr. Shabby took and put lots of molding around there. So it really gives it a gorgeous built-in look. He did a good job with that. And so there we go. I appreciate you joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed getting a little peek behind the other side of the camera. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all for the love and support that you showed me in 2022, and I look so forward to all of the fun projects that I've got in store for us in 2023. And so until next time, my sweet friends, be blessed.